right, let me take off this 10-pound backpack full of gold and welcome you to DEF CON. Hello, DEF CON. <laughs> so we're going to kind of split this up between two things. I want to talk a little bit about DEF CON and then we're going to uh, introduce the toy makers and talk about their badge creation this year. And then if we have a little time left, I'd love to do some questions from the audience. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works out that way. Um, okay, I want to see by a show of hands, how many people are here for the very first time? Well, I guess for a welcoming session, that makes sense. Congratulations. I'd love to figure out how you found your way here. Because uh, we really don't advertise, and it's always been word of mouth. I think maybe in the very early years, I took out ads in like 2600 and there was a blacklisted 411. But after that, last 20 years, we just really haven't ever advertised. It's all social media. And when I talk to people about that, their brain's like, you mean you have 30,000 people that show up in the desert and you don't have a dime spent on advertising? It's like, we spend that money on like alcohol and <laughs> other things. <laughs> I'd rather have servers and hard drives than a marketing person. Um, so anyway, so we've made it here by just weird coincidence of word of mouth. And I think it's a winning formula. It's very social. And so you'll notice a lot of the things that we say around DEF CON are these uh, sort of truisms, like uh, the con is what you make of it. And that sounds marketing-ish, but it's not invented by a marketer. Uh, it was more of a way of us saying, basically, it's what you make of it, so go fix it yourself, kind of, right? If you see something wrong, do something about it. Get some people together. And if you see that mentality, that's why with this year we have a record number of villages, like 28 villages or something? Um, yeah, that's a record number. <laughs> and so, tell you a little bit about, you are all here experiencing our experiment, uh, an experiment. I talked about it a little bit in the welcome note in the program, but we've never done a uh, multi-hotel before. It's all scary and brand new and we have no idea what to expect. Like, Will people venture out with the burning orb and go across the street? Like, how does that work? We have no idea. Let's find out. Uh, so, once we got that extra space, because we were pretty certain we outgrew Caesars last year, uh, it allowed us to do things like grow for the first time in a number of years, add new uh, events that we'd never been able to do. So. There's more content in villages and contests now than there are main speaking tracks, right? It was always like the speaking track was the main thing and then we had some villages and contests. But now, because we have extra space and because we just try to give uh, a platform to people who want to try something new, that side has exploded. So now we've got people who will never see a talk and only do villages and that's okay. Right? We record the talks, we give them away for free. Do the things that you want to do. Don't feel that you have to see a talk or your friends will like talk shame you. You can uh, make of the con what you want. So that brings me to my second point is we try to record everything. With union rates that gets really expensive. So we couldn't record everything we wanted to but we record as much as we can and we release it all because if, if it's not recorded it sort of doesn't exist. Um, and the whole theory I guess behind NEFCON is it's, it's a community event. I want everybody to get the information. And in the early days I was concerned. I was like well if I give away the content why would people come? You know they'll just wait for it. And then that took about two years to figure out that no VR and augmented reality and meeting at a distance and tele-travel and all this stuff, nobody cares about that. We have faster bandwidth, more realistic tele-everything and all the conferences have record attendance. It's because people want to meet people, right? They don't want to uh, meet an uh, iPad on a, you know, wheel driving around. They want to see actual humans. That's what's going on here. And so ever since that realization, every year I try to figure out how to make humans meet humans. What do we have to do? 
Break you guys into smaller groups. Get you into lock picking. Get you into hardware hacking. Find little affinity groups. Yes, there's billions of people here. But we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get you into groups of people you want to meet and hang out with. Um, and then allow you to kind of jump around between that. So, you guys think that's working? Is that a worthy goal? Keep that up? Yeah. yeah. There's, no, uh, there's no manual for this, so a lot of it we just kind of invent as we go. Um, so for example, the, some of the big inventions this year is uh, really trying to increase transparency around the con. You saw some posts at the last minute um, we'd been working on for a while, and then we realized, you know, if we don't post these soon, it's going to be too late. So um, a couple years ago, we started putting the departments of where the goons were working on the back of their shirts. And, uh, and last year, we wanted to get um, every shirt individually named so you can see who you're talking to. But the problem is we realized a lot of people in Vegas wear backpacks, and that would cover up the name. And so we started to produce all these T-shirts with names on it that nobody would read. Like, okay, that's not going to work. So this year we went to this patch idea where the patch kind of clamps on the badge. Um, and then that way when you're talking to someone, you kind of know who you're talking to. Um, and at first I thought, you know, that's loss of anonymity. Um, and it turns out the goons really like it because they can put whatever they want on there. <laughs> so it's not like they're putting a real name, but it was just a way for you to, you know, to personalize. We also... Um, started last year this uh, transparency report, just trying to tell you like what kind of shenanigans we put up with, how many people we kick out and why, those kinds of things. And I fully expect those numbers to increase because I think what's going to happen is people are going to get comfortable reporting things and as they get more comfortable, the numbers will increase. Just, it's natural, right? So if people think we're never going to do anything about it, they're not going to report anything. They'll, they'll complain on Twitter, but they won't tell us. We'll find out about it the hard way. Um, but if they see that we're actually doing something, they'll start coming forward to us, and then our numbers will increase. And I'm not terrified of increased numbers. I think that's healthy. So sort of my way of saying, if you see something really sketchy going on, you think there's some code of conduct violation or somebody's about to burn down the hotel, please don't just video it and put it on YouTube. Just, <laughs> I mean, tell us about it and then post the video. But give us a chance to respond first. Um, <laughs> someone added, I mean, I love that there's com competing trackers to try to figure out, look, well, by show of hands, how many people here are using the hacker tracker? Awesome. Okay, how many people are trying the Out Outel website where you can see the whole entire schedule on one page? Not many people using Outel. You can do a CS, I mean, you can do a, um, what is it, a, a iCal, CalDAV invite, get it on your calendar and sync it with so there's these, we have two giant scheduling platforms just to try to figure out how many uh, talks we have. At the last count, we have almost 600. That's like five or six times, yeah. <laughs> so when people say, do you know what's going on? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, I mean, we provide maybe 120 of those talks, 140. The rest is all straight up from villages and other. So that's what's so awesome about this community. We give you a little platform, and next thing you know, you've got 100 talks, and uh, you know, people, ex-ambassadors to the UN, uh, coming and talking about voting villages, uh, voting machines. So uh, this is a formula we're going to stick with. Now, going forward, you might have also noticed in the program, I'm talking about this is our last year at Caesars. That doesn't mean burn down Caesars. <laughs> that means leave it intact um, so the property will have us at other ones, right? We'd, we, ideally, we would actually clean the windows on the way out so they would be really impressed with us. Um, so next year, um, I'll talk about it at the closing ceremonies. We're going to switch hotels uh, next year. And when we switch, we're hoping to get a little bit better layout and we're going to continue uh, this large variety of villages. Um, and the other thing is we're doing a little creative destruction here. So if there's villages that you go to and they're absolutely like, what's going on here, this is a disaster, let us know. And if there's villages you go to that you absolutely love, let us know because we need to see who, who can cut the mustard. Um, 
and keep giving the stage to the people that are doing a good job and then give somebody a new chance if there's some villages that aren't doing very well, right? That's, we want this kind of turmoil and churn in the villages so there's new stuff put on by people excited by it. Um, also, I, I, I kind of want to, how do I do this? How do I get your opinion? Um, DEF CON is a hacker con. We try really hard to keep it hacker. It's not an infosec con, right? And some people are confused about the difference. Sometimes I get confused on the difference. But we're not sponsored. We've never been sponsored. We try really hard to make the hacker mentality infused in everything we do. Um, and that's really hard because there's so much money involved now. Right? Everybody's got a career. Everybody's got a, a ladder they're climbing or a specialty. And so when we think about what does it mean to be a hacker con versus infosec con, the thing that really crystallized it for me was about four, four or five years ago, I was talking to a, a, a past CSO of Facebook. They've gone through a number, but past Facebook uh, CSO, and I said, hey, are you going to uh, Black Hat? He said, no, I don't, I don't send my people uh, to Black Hat. It's like, what? what are you talking about? There's like all these incredible ninjas doing trainings and classes and he's like, yeah, but if I go to an InfoSec event, <clears throat> I have people that are really good at one thing and I send them to a training and they get better. They get like this much better or that much better. And then I send them to a talk and they get this much better. And they're taking their existing skills and they're getting a little better. It's like polishing the blade just a little bit more. It's like I'm not interested in that. I send everybody to DEF CON because I need to teach my people how to think. It's like, you know, how do you approach a problem? How do you problem solve? How do you explore new concepts? How do you just, through the joy of discovery, stumble into a room and learn a whole new thing that excites you, right? And so that's a, that joy of discovery, that sort of accidental discovery, that's something we're really trying hard to grow. Um, and so, I don't know if that resonates with you, but I see that as one big difference. Um, so, not an infosec con, hacker con. <laughs> um, so, thinking about that, you know, what is hacker? And it's funny because uh, it's changed over the years, right? In the early days, we spent so much, I spent so much time, Half of my time was spent trying to figure out who to meet and what they knew and could they teach it to me. And then I only had like 30% of my time actually doing the thing that I learned about because I had to burn all my energy on figuring out who knew what and could they share it with me. Nowadays I think that's flipped. You, there's an unlimited number of things for you to learn uh, and you have access to it on YouTube and on videos and conferences so you're not spending 40, 50 percent of your time trying to figure out who knows what. You can spend 80 percent of your time just doing the thing. And it's almost like this embarrassment of riches we have right now. Um, and so I'll get up and I'll look at the content. And it's a time management thing now for me. It's like, man, I wish I had time for that. I wish I had time for that. I wish I had time for that. Where before I wouldn't even know half of those things existed. Um, so we're in this land of plenty. We're hackers and we want to tear it all apart. And some people get to the show and their heads explode because they're just overwhelmed with things to do. It's like, don't worry about it. Collect some cards, talk to some people, make some notes. You'll have the whole rest of the year to get caught up on everything you saw here. It's more important, I think, um, to make the relationships um, and later on you can spend all your waking hours on the tech. <clears throat> because I think ultimately hacking is really social. And if you notice the badges um, for this year, in almost all years, uh, when Lost was creating them or Joe Grand was creating them, <clears throat> when Joe first started doing some of our badges, we spent a lot of time talking about how do we use the badge as a tool to force people to actually be social? Because a lot of us aren't, right? We, we kind of sometimes lack those skills. But if we have an excuse, a tech excuse, hey, it's not me, man, it's just the badge, the badge is making me talk to you, <laughs> you know, I mean. Normally I'd never answer your call or your phone, but you know, badge is doing it. So we spend a lot of time like how do we make the badge force you to interact? And we've done it with wireless, infrared, and near field, um, 
we've tried a lot of things. This year, you know, you see the, the mating plug in 10 milliseconds or less, so you don't have to spend too much time talking to someone. <laughs> um, uh, with the social game, and that forces you to, to sort of puzzle it out. If we gave you all the rules and gave you all the, the how-tos, it might not be as easy, right? It's still a hacking con. You might notice there's a, a serial port here you can get on and, and play the game that way as well. So we put a lot of energy thinking into how to make things more social for you. And to attendees, that might just be sort of background noise. But to us in the back end, it's funny, we obsess on these little things. Um, trying to figure out like what you like and what don't you like that teaches you some skills. So for example, in the early years, the reason we started hardware badges, the reason I got Joe to do it is because I felt that people were losing hardware skills. At that time, everything was software. Hardware was like black magic voodoo. And I was thinking, if I was a real hacker, if I was like some Johnny mnemonic, you know, I would be up in the hardware business. Right? That's where all, a lot of stuff happens. But as hackers, if we're going to be the resistance, we can't even connect to a console port. So how do we get people interested in hardware? How do we get that going? And it's been more than 10 years. And now we have what, over 100 and something hardware badges this year at Con. Over 100 different ones from one. Right? People are not intimidated by hardware anymore. People are having a lot of fun. We can do this. And so if I could plant a seed and then the community just explodes, like I have to tell you, still to this day, I know about this much about hardware. But that doesn't mean I can't try to help foster it. So this year um, is, I want to introduce the toy makers who designed it. They're going to go through a little bit of the game, try not to give it all away. And I'm also going to show you off, this is the Uber badge for this year. Um, and we talked a little bit about the, the magic black ink that turned out to not be that magic. Um, and so uh, this is what the winners of uh, certain contests will get this year. It's the admission for life uh, for DEF CON. If you, if you earn, uh, you don't win it, you earn it, uh, a black badge. And so I'll be showing this off uh, throughout the con and then we give away and announce the winners. The only winners of contests that get black badges that know it are the capture the flag winners. Everybody else, we really don't reveal which contests will get it. Um, one, in the past when we did that, people gamed it and everybody just only played on black badge events and it kind of hurt the other contests. And then some of the contests that were knew they were black badge contests, some of them just kind of rested and they didn't, they didn't keep up their game um, because there wasn't a lot of competition. They just knew they had it. And so once we made it a variable, maybe you get it, maybe you don't, everybody started to up their game again. Uh, so if you're wondering why am I wearing this little death skull, um, this is because I've got the black badge. I'm keeping it real here. Okay, with that said, I want to hand it over to Addie from the Toy Makers. Do you have a microphone? You've got one? She's got some slides she's going to step through, and then I think we're going to have time. Do you want to do some Q&A at the end? Yeah, guys? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Coffee. Yes, <laughs> please. All right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the DEF CON 26 official badge talk. Uh, we are the toy makers and the creators of this year's badge. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. <sighs> Thank you. Um, but th before we get started uh, talking about the badge, I wanted to make sure to give proper homage to those that came before us. Uh, so. To Joe Kingpin Grand, who uh, started these badges with uh, Dark Tangent for years 14 to 18, and Ryan Lost Boy Clark, who did years 19 and 24, if we can give a rousing round of applause for their work. All right, so who are we? We are the toy makers. Uh, the badge team this year consisted of a hardware engineer, Wire. Uh, a software ninja who you can't see because she's a ninja. Uh, Whisker 
and a nurse. And uh, we really got our start from make from into the uh, InfoSec conference community by making uh, badges for CypherCon, which is an InfoSec con in Wisconsin, so flyover state. But we love it. <laughs> so some numbers. Um, this year we made 28,220 badges. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and this ranged all the way from 26,300 human badges to 25 coveted Uber badges. Uh, each badge had 91 components, and so uh, this led to me shepherding about 2.6 million different components uh, through the system. There are 43 LEDs per badge with the RGBs broken out there, um, and on the bottom right you'll see the total number of emails that were sent through the course of this process. <laughs> and if you are medically minded, this is also the graph that shows my cortisol levels. So uh, just a little bit about the background. We were graciously, graciously asked by Dark Tangent um, to do this very um, humbling, just, oh my God, <laughs> um, to create this year's badge uh, back in November. And the interesting thing about this timeline is that due to lead times, we actually had to order parts before we could get a working prototype. So thankfully the team got it right the first time. <laughs> Um, and our prototype was completed in May and firmware completed in June. Now, with the order this large, when you need to program 29,000 microcontrollers, usually the easiest time to program these is as the chips are being manufactured. And uh, it, we just didn't have time to do that. And so we asked a chip supplier uh, to see if they could program these chips for us. They said, sure, no problem. Um, and they had six months essentially to figure out how to do this. So, fast forward to about three, four weeks ago, they, <laughs> they say, hey, we don't actually know how to program these chips. <laughs> and they sent us screenshots of their programming machines to ask if we could tell them what check boxes to check in order to program the chips. I said, thanks for nothing. Let's overnight these to our fab, which they took five days to overnight. <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, uh, the fab that we worked with, eTechNet, uh, amazing folks, uh, they uh, hired some temp workers. And so all the badges that you guys have on you have been hand programmed by those six temp workers. <laughs> And of course, uh, it would not be a DEF CON badge if there weren't shipment issues. <laughs> now, they did get here on time, which I hear is actually kind of rare. It's really rare. Yeah. Um, but trade war caused a lot of problems. Uh, so shipments that were supposed to take five days would take 10. Shipments that would be overnight would take five days. Overnight just really isn't a thing. Yeah, pricing changes a little bit too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but fortunately, I got the personal desk numbers of a couple of uh, FedEx custom team members. Thank you, Adrian and Bailey. You guys rock. Um, and they were able to help push these uh, badges through, and um, so our thanks to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So the theme of the. Okay, so the theme of DEF CON this year is 1983, which is in relation to the book 1984 written by George Orwell. Now, if you've never read the book, one, you totally should, very appropriate. Two, um, it's where concepts such as Big Brother, uh, thought crime, perpetual war against the other come from. Um, really, it essentially describes a society that is completely counter to hacker ethics. Uh, so in the book, there are different ministries. So the Ministry of Truth, where, um, let's see, where 
It deals in revisionist history and changing what was true to match what the party now says is true. The Ministry of Plenty, which rations food. Ministry of Peace, which is actually the war arm of the party. Ministry of Love, where if you don't love the party, they'll torture you until you do. Um, and so fortunately, we are time travelers here. Welcome to the year 1983. Um, this is the year where we still have time to make decisions that can change the future and avoid this Orwellian collapse. Um, and these decisions aren't made by people in ivory towers. They're made by people like you and me. Um, it's about what we choose to do, what we choose to accept, what we choose to ignore. Um, and this is, these are decisions that we make in our everyday lives that, impa that impact what happens to us as a society. So, um, because these decisions are made by everyday us, uh, our design aesthetic overall is everyday buildings for everyday people. And everyday people have different stories. So, uh, each type of badge, human, goon, contest, etc., is a different interactive story. You might start a, as an employee, a visitor, a student, etc. And if everyone, if everyone would look at their badge, you might notice that the DEF CON letters are lit red, green, uh, lightish green, or not at all. These are reflective of the choices that have been made in your story and the status of your puzzles. So the letter N is what the sum of your choices have identified you as. Uh, in other words, your alignment. Okay. Where red stands for contributing to the rise of dystopian doom for shame. And green is contributing to a healthy hacker friendly future. Uh, you'll also notice little people roaming on your badge. So the green individual is you because we have high hopes. The red one is your little goon and that's right. This year at DEF CON everyone gets their own goon that you can stuff in your pocket. <laughs> so. Just as you can make choices in your own story, your little goon can also make choices in the story. So if you prefer that your little goon makes the same choices as you would, it would be in your best interest to find a big goon who has a badge with an alignment which matches your alignment. And connecting your badge to theirs will allow your little goon to inherit the alignment of big goon. And just as that goon's badge can affect your story based on the choices they've made, the choices you've made in your own story can affect any of the other badges you connect to and vice versa. Except, except. Nope. It can infect goons. Oh yeah. This is a, this is a two way street, Dark Tangent. <laughs> All right, so in order to get complete control of your lights, not only will your choices matter, but you'll have to seek out others of every other badge type who've made good choices and or encourage them or convince them to make the right choices. So a potential goal then, a soft goal, would be to get your DEF CON lights to be all the same color, either red or green. So badge basics. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the badge was immediately interactive. So if you notice on the bottom of your badge, uh, there's a DEF CON symbol and 26. These are touch sensitive pads corresponding to up, down, left, right, and plus and minus. Uh, these work for moving your character around and for interacting with the puzzles at each position. Uh, but because we know that sometimes capacitive work does, capa sorry, capacitive touch doesn't always work in every environment and with everybody's different uh, fingers. Uh, there's a micro USB connector at the bottom of the badge. So uh, this allows you to power the badge without batteries and also makes the game much, much easier. So just some basics. Uh, once you plug the badge, if you don't have the drivers, you may need to get microchip USB CDC drivers. Uh, it'll assign a COM port to your badge. You'll want to open up a serial terminal emulator. Uh, for Windows, we use PuTTY. 
um, Mac screen, Android phones, you can use serial USB terminal. And you just want to make sure that to access it, you can uh, you write the correct COM port associated with your badge. And uh, to access the graphics, you may want to turn on IBM code page 437. And all of this is so that you're able to access the ANSI version of the badge. So ANSI use, was used by artists in the text mode art scene on BBSs way back when. Um, and the artwork is 80 by columns wide by 80 rows tall. And on your terminal screen, you'll see about 80 by 25. Okay. So when you plug it in, get the serial terminal emulator up, uh, you'll see the following screen, at least if you're a human. Um, and this is a screenshot of the garage and the human badge. And you'll see that there's some story text on the bottom, as well as text based on the decisions you've made. On the bottom left hand side are the controls you can use, which also show you what directions you're able to go. So green for go, red for no go, white for that's not even an option. Uh, the bottom right will then also show you what your DEF CON letters are. So since these, let's see, uh, oh no, we're here, so here. Uh, oh no, we're here, good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so since these lights also reflect the status of your puzzles, uh, note that this badge has both software and hardware puzzles. The main microcontroller on the badge is a PIC32MM, you can interface with it using MPLAB X, um, and you can reprogram it using a Picket 3 or 4, uh, and hardware puzzles do exist. All right, so now that we've gotten through the meat of the badge, uh, here are some side-by-side -side pictures of the badges and the drawings they were based off of. Um, I'll also point out some choice cool things that I am particularly fond of, because I drew them, so. All right, human badge, you guys got the garage. Uh, now the cool thing about this is uh, you guys get a ramen shop, because who doesn't like ramen, right? We've got a nod to uh, Back to the Future, we've got a nod to Metropolis, and you also get a subway train in your basement. Press badge, you guys get a broadcast station. Uh, so, one, you get a satellite dish, that's the size of Montana. Um, and along the bottom, uh, the very bottom, well first we put you in the basement of your company. And uh, along the bottom, you'll notice that the technologies go from laptop to CRT, to typewriter, to uh, pen and paper. And you get a photography room too. Goon badge, uh, this is a panopticon. And uh, this particular badge had maybe the most cyberpunky graphics, I would say. Um, you guys also get a lot of interrogation rooms. <laughs> Contest badge. Uh, this is based off a library. One, who doesn't like libraries? I love libraries. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Library! <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are multiple fireplaces, and you get a pretty rockin' lounge in the basement as well. The vendor badge, uh, this one is a factory, and my favorite part about this is that there's a crane in the basement, uh, because I thought if I could put a crane in a badge, why not? So there you go. <laughs> Speaker badge, um, this is a theater. There are performance theaters, movie theaters, uh, and drive-in movie theaters, and so, you, oh, and you also get like a rock concert hall, so. The artist badge, this is based off a gallery. Uh, there's a gallery, there's a performance hall, and I even give a little nod to the curators uh, for dealing with all of the uh, desiccated mummies and uh, boxes and shipments in the basement. And the CFP badge, uh, you may notice on the top, there is architecture from MIT. Uh, we thought it would be pretty recognizable. 
Um, but below that, there is an underground server room, there are sewers, and there's even a mine because apparently there are universities out there that have mines in their school, and so you have a stegosaurus fossil there too. Oops, oh no. All right, I'm not exactly sure how to do it. But, but before we do the thanks, I wanted to make sure to get a few out PSAs out. One, please put the batteries in the correct way. <laughs> yeah. So we do have reverse polarity protection. Um, so the badges that did get leaked on are actually perfectly fine as long as you clean them up. But if you reverse even just one battery, and we tested this, if you reverse just one battery, after about a half an hour, you will learn the wetware hacking part of our badge. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you want to see why that happened? So what's going on here is to get the duration out of the battery pack to try and last the entire con without having to replace batteries, we put a buck boost regulator on there. So it will run from six volts down to about two and a half. If you put one battery in backwards, you get plus 1.5, minus 1.5 from the battery that's backwards, plus 1.5, plus 1.5. So you get three volts, the badge is happy. But that one battery that's backwards, you're trying to charge it. Not very, it's very not happy. It's non-rechargeable, so folks. It, it doesn't get hot. It actually just internally degasses, and until the pressure pop builds up, and then you hear a pop. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> yep, I heard the pop. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of interesting, actually. The NaOH that's in it is the will make your skin feel kind of slippery, and it's the same stuff that's in soap. So it, it's kind of creepy. So it'll clean our shirts? Sure. No. <laughs> um, the other thing is there have been some pretty awesome legends cropping around uh, this badge, which is totally fun to hear. Um, but you can take the batteries out. Uh, the game will restart where you are positionally, but all of your linkages as well as your decisions will still remain. So please, if you need to sleep, take the batteries out. Okay. Okay, so finally we wanted to do our, oh, total run time uh, is about 65 to 70 hours. Okay. So get some sleep. <laughs> if you're putting the SAOs on, oh, we that run guarantee. time will vary greatly. It will yeah. not, well, I have not seen an add-on that make, will make it run longer. <laughs> yeah. So our thanks, of course, uh, to eTechNet and their temp workers for, again, manually uh, programming all these badges, the FedEx Customs team, um, our badge pimp, Michael Getzman, and CypherCon for just introducing us to the rabbit hole of badges, Mar Williams for her art on the back. Um, if you get all the badges on the, uh, in a row in the correct order, you'll get a mini mural from Mar. Um, Joe Grant for opening our eyes to the logistics issues involved in um, making this many badges. And of course, you guys for wearing the badges even though you're kind of forced to. <laughs> um, but also just, you know, being here, being DEF CON. Um, and so here's to an awesome conference and we hope you enjoy the badge. Closing, we are going to be releasing the source code if someone else hasn't already released it. <laughs> <laughs> and, did you want some water? and we'll see about the. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, and we'll see about the schematics um, again if they're not already leaked. Uh, but there are a number of places that I think people are working on these. There's some impromptu badge hacking villages that have cropped up around the place, a lot of some of the chill out rooms. Um, but there's a great article on Hackaday uh, by Mike Stitch, which shows kind of the basics of the badge. And I think Reddit also has, um, our DEF CON also has some folks who are giving out hints. But hopefully uh, this helped clear up a few questions. Sounds great. Any Q&A? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, okay. So, let's see. We've got five whole minutes. Let's do one or two Q&A. Quick, who can never get to the microphones? This guy wins first. Get to the mic first. right here. Okay, what do you got? Nobody? He was walking past the microphone on the way out the door. Oh. Okay. Bye. That explains that. No questions. Great. Well, in that case, oh wait, we have one question right here. Okay, and then we'll go. Run, Run to the microphone. Run, Forrest. Oh, which CAD package was used to do the design? PyCAD. Pi, PyCAD. Okay, sir? How much did it cost? We don't know yet. <laughs> nice. Um, partially because um, when you order this many batteries, you get like thousands of pounds, like tons of batteries, and we got shipped half the number of batteries we needed. So we get here and they're like, hey, um, we only have 56,000 batteries. Where are the other 56,000 batteries? Like, well, that's all we shipped. So we had somebody that spent like 15 hours and in one day he found all the remaining batteries in California and Nevada. <laughs> and uh, basically went to Fry's and said, I heard a rumor you've got 10,000 batteries, sell them to me. Uh, and so we know that that's about, uh, I think it was 10,000 batteries weighed 500 pounds in his trunk. So, yeah, so we're still calculating <laughs> the costs. <laughs> Sir? Oh. If you try to hack it and screw it up, is there an easy way to reset it? So currently there is a way to reset it if you can find it. <laughs> it is not very, it's intentionally not obvious. Um, I've seen one Reddit post where someone got really close, but they haven't gotten in yet. Um, if you really get it screwed up, just come find me and I can reprogram your badge and clear it out. Yeah, that reminds me. We, this year we created a badge hacking area. Um, so it's near the hardware hacking village in the solder skills area. It's just a big open area with a bunch of tables and power and it's just for people interested in badges and engineering them and solving puzzles to go. So we gave you a dedicated space this year. Okay, last question to this gentleman in the white hat. Thank you. Uh, we, so we only just, when you mentioned about the, the allegiance uh, with the green and the red, we pretty much have all the badges. We went around and met all the badges. Are we, do we have to go realign to change the colors? <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and on that happy note, thank you everyone and see you at DEF CON. <laughs> <laughs>